Hey guys, it's Zachary from Huawei Zone, and today we're going to be talking about this. Huawei has traditionally been known to produce really good bang for buck smart activity trackers. I've been reviewing almost all their stuff since the Watch GT2 days when they started really getting good at doing this. I've reviewed their Watch Fit series. I've also reviewed the Watch 3, which was their first attempt to try and make a full-fledged smartwatch. You can check that out. I'll link that somewhere. Um, but we all know what happened to Huawei since then. So they've sort of gone back to doing what they do best since the Watch 3, the Watch GT3 series came out. It was in 2021, I guess. But they've been rather quiet since then. So now about two years later, 2023, we've got the Watch GT4. The Watch GT4 is essentially an aesthetic upgrade to the GT3. That's it. Hardware is the same. Usage, experience, menus, icons, and basically the whole feel of the GT4 is the same as the GT3. I couldn't really even see any difference in terms of specs between these two generations as well. This sort of gives the same vibes as the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 series, the 4, 5, and 6. I just reviewed the Watch 6 as well about a month ago. You can check that video out. The GT4 has the same sensors as, as far as I can see. Now, I don't have the GT3 anymore. This is the GT3 Pro. On specs, Huawei says that the GT4 has a new TrueScene 5.5 plus heart rate sensor uh, that, that does more things. But from what I can see, if you actually look at the back of the sensors itself, you can see that there are eight photodiodes surrounding sort of a group of two light sources. And this is still the same configuration in both these watches. Now the back of the watches look slightly different because the Pro has a ceramic rear while the GT has a plastic rear. So we discount that, but the sensor itself looks exactly the same. And if you look at the UI, this actually has Harmony OS 4. While the GT3 came with Harmony OS 2, it's eventually upgraded to Harmony OS 3 but you don't get Harmony OS 4 on the GT3, while the GT4 gets Harmony OS 4. When you actually look at the watches, besides new watch faces that you can install, when you click into the menu, it's the same, right? You can scroll in and out. The, the apps you get are essentially exactly the same. The icons look exactly the same. When you click into all these different apps, they also provide the same sort of menus, UIs. So nothing much is different there, except that there are slight improvements in how things are grouped. For example, on Harmony OS 4, on the Watch GT4, when you scroll into, let's say, your heart rate screen, you will also be able to see at a glance your stress level, your SpO2, your sleep score. Whereas on the older, Watch GT3 series, if you just go in the heart rate, you only see heart rate. But otherwise, they sort of work exactly the same. Even in terms of physical hardware, it's basically the same between the two generations. We've got a 1.4 inch AMOLED display, 466 by 466 pixels. I don't really see any difference between the two. I think the brightness is also exactly the same. It's definitely not as bright as the newer watches from Apple and uh, Samsung, but it's bright enough to be able to see during the day. In the spirit of sameness, you guessed it, the performance of the GT4 versus the GT3 is more or less uh, the same as well. Um, in, in these two, three weeks I've been testing it, whether it's activity tracking, running, heart rate monitoring, sleep monitoring, both these watches pretty much gave very similar results. Here's a record of two identical runs on the GT4 and GT3 Pro. Obviously, there's difference in presentation on the two watches because of Harmony OS 4 and 3, but the data is more or less 
very comparable between the two in terms of performance and tracking. So 2.5 km, 2.44, slight difference there, but 188 to 184 calories, pace 4.46, uh, where, where's pace? Uh, the pace menu, there we go, 4.38, very similar. If we try to find the heart rate zones, again, as you can see, very similar here. Heart rate measurements, high 184, low 82, 83, average 163, 162. So one beat per minute the difference between these two watches. We've got... Uh, the cadence, can we find the cadence here? 172 with an average of 168, average here 167. Again, as you can see, it's very much um, similar between these two, training, training stress, anaerobic, aerobic. There's slightly more data on the GT4, but generally, I'm pretty convinced that these two watches have basically the same sensors and tracking ability. If you've watched my previous reviews before, you'll find that I actually really like Huawei sensors on Huawei activity trackers because I find that among the sort of home consumer hobbyist market for activity trackers, Huawei sensors actually give you the most complete set of, of features, functionalities and analytics than any other watch in, in its price range. Huawei has put in quite a lot of effort into introducing features that you'd really only find in more expensive, like enthusiasts or professional, you know, athletic watches. Like for example, if you do go into the running data on the watch itself, you'd be able to see like your running ability index, um, training load, training index in, in terms of fitness and fatigue, uh, how much recovery time you need from one workout to the next, VO2 max, yes. And there's even estimated times based on all these metrics that the watch has taken of you and of your runs in the past. How long would it take for you to run five kilometers, 10 kilometers, half marathon, or even a full marathon. This, this is like a prediction that's on the watch itself. And if you open the Huawei Health app, you sort of get a lot more information as well in terms of other things besides just running, general health, heart rate, sleep. There's a lot of in-depth information and, and menus that you can go into for something that is built in or smart activity tracker. I'm quite pleased to report that battery life is also the same, which is great because Huawei has sort of been running with this two-week battery life since the watch GT2 and that hasn't changed. The GT4 also has that average two-week battery life, though with always on display, you can sort of expect that to be cut down to eight or nine-ish days. I have consistently gotten about nine to 10 days out of the GT4 with always display, uh, always on display, uh, a run every other day, messages, notices turned on, sleep tracking. That's generally the average what you get. And that's great because you can basically go the entire week without charging your watch and you don't have that charge anxiety when you go to sleep and wake up with a dead watch. Obviously, that's also because they are not full-fledged smartwatches, which means that there are some sort of downsides. The GT4 is a very basic Bluetooth activity tracker. It doesn't have LTE, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it doesn't have apps. The good thing though, is that everything's built in, so it works on just about all devices. It works on Android, it works on iOS, it has slightly more functions in on Android. Like for example, if you really want to load MP3s into this, you need to use an Android phone to do that on the iOS uh, app. You can't do that, but otherwise in terms of just activity tracking, everything I talked about, uh, messages, notices, Bluetooth calls, and even connecting to your default calendar, 
the GT4 does it even on iOS. So that's great. So if everything is the same, what's new with the GT4? Well, case design. So you can see the GT4 has an angle, sort of like octagon um, case to it as opposed to the standard round cases of the old watches. Now, I have said this before, I think it was the GT2 Pro review, the GT3 Pro looks the same, that this looks like a dress watch because it's sophisticated titanium body, sapphire glass, right? But the GT4 is the first one that I really feel can be a proper dress watch. You can wear this out with just about any outfit and you can take this to workouts because of all the advanced metrics it has. And it looks really, really great. There is one new app on the GT4 and it's called the Stay Fit app. Now, what is this Stay Fit app? It's basically like your calorie counters on most health apps where you have to input the kind of food you eat so you can track your daily calorie intake. What this does in extra is that you can set up your own goals in the Stay Fit app, whether you want to maintain your weight or you want to lose weight or how fast you want to lose weight. And it basically calculates for you based on your daily activity, your workouts, and how much calories you sort of expend and how much calories you intake and calculate your calorie deficit or calorie surplus. Obviously, this is not going to be a completely automated process. You still need to input the kind of foods that you eat. You know, the watch is not going to know. But at least, like most of the other metrics that um, Huawei does, they give you something that you can use at the end for whatever it is that you're tracking. So in that sense, it's, it's pretty useful information, a pretty useful tool rather than just a daily calorie counter. So the watch GT4 is supposed to have an updated GPS array that connects about 30% faster. So I'm up here in the open. Let's see which watch connects first. There you go. The GT4 is already connected even if I started the GT3 Pro first. And this is still looking. Yep, the GT4 is definitely faster at connection. The Huawei Watch GT4 starts from 298 Singapore dollars, which is the same price as the Watch GT3 when it was first launched. So it's good on Huawei that they've sort of kept the same price range for these two devices, even after two years apart. But there is a little caveat here. 298 is for the standard black edition with the black elastomer strap. The one I have here is this green hybrid nylon strap. This goes for 348. If you opt for the leather strap, it also is 348. And if you go for the all metal stainless steel strap, that is 498 Singapore dollars. Now that's quite a big jump from 298 to 408 just based on the strap alone. And you might think that, hey, it's the same watch. I'll just buy the cheapest one and get my own straps. Yes, you can do that. These are standard 22 mm um, Lux. You can use any strap you want. But Huawei has been slightly cheeky here by making the watches a little bit different from each other. The internals are the same, specifications are the same. Everything else is the same. I've been using the same quite a lot in this video. You could probably make a drinking game out of it. But if you actually look at the case on my green version, there's some green in it, right? Half of the top case has this sort of like green line in, in it. And the black version is the only version that is all black on the outside rather than um, silver or stainless steel like this. So if you don't like that black look, you're going to have to pony up for this stainless steel look for $348. So that is something to think about. Before I forget, this review is based on the 46mm version of the Watch GT4. This is larger and has that, that unique angled design and numbered bezel. 
Huawei does sell a smaller 41mm version that doesn't have this design. That is more classic circular jewelry type design for women. So who is the Watch GT4 for? Right? Now, if you are a person that does not want a smartwatch, or maybe you've used a smartwatch before and find that you don't really use any of the features, uh, functions, or apps that a smartwatch can, can do, and it's basically a glorified step tracker for you and notification center, then perhaps this is a good buy because this has incredible battery life, it looks really good, and it has a full suite of, you know, tracking analytics and, and, and metrics that it's going to throw at you that basically punches above its weight. Now, can you get a cheaper device? Obviously you can. You've got a lot of smart bands that do almost the same things as well for a lot cheaper in $100, $150. Can you go more expensive? Definitely if you are an, a, a serious athlete and you maybe want a Garmin device for example but for most people i think the gt4 lives in this huawei sweet spot of bang buck price to performance kind of ratio that they do really really well and not a lot of devices i feel can sort of live in this space obviously being able to work on both android and ios is also a big pro for the GT4, but if you're a Huawei user and have a GT2 and below, this is a definite upgrade. GT3 onwards, not really, it's the same watch, but I do want to know what you think. Do you already have the GT4? Do you have the GT3 or any of the GT3 family? It's, it's, I think it's one of the largest families of watches Huawei launched in, in the past two years before they sort of stopped there was the gt3 gt3 se gt3 pro i think there was a gt runner or running watch as well i'm waiting to see if they start doing that with the gt4 but in the meantime i really want to know what you think tell us in the comments do you agree with me disagree me have i missed out something is there a particular feature i didn't know that is really new or unique to the gt4 let me know. Don't forget, like, subscribe, check out howizone.com for more news, reviews, and tech features. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to check out hardwarezone.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Join in the conversation. Like and subscribe to our YouTube if you want to see more of these videos. Do it. Oh.